Hi, I'm Tom Field, Vice President of Editorial with Information Security Media Group. I'm talking about a new approach to endpoint security software testing and several other issues as well. My pleasure to be speaking with Tomer Weingarten. He's the CEO of Sentinel One. Tomer, thanks so much for joining us today. Yep, definitely. Thanks for having me. A ton of topics I want to talk with you about. And the first one I want to start with is security software testing. Uh, you've got a, a philosophy that organizations really need to adjust their approach to endpoint security software testing. What's your issue with it? I think, I mean, these guys have been testing security products for, you know, the last decade or so, and they've kind of architectured their entire test suite to really adhere to the technologies of the past 10 years. Right. The thing is, I mean, as we all know, endpoint protection is evolving, the threat landscape is evolving, and it really feels like those testing suites have not evolved together with those technologies. So a lot of the things, a lot of the facilities that they're using are not really even adequate to test some of these newer approaches, newer products that require, you know, a more advanced methodology to really meet and, and try to test all of the functionality for the newer products. So, you know, our company definitely tries to work with these organizations to really meet and evolve some of these um, criteria. We are being tested constantly by some of these, um, you know, very reputable powerhouses for testing, but all in all, I mean, we would benefit from a more robust testing criteria that would actually show some differentiation between the different products because the end result today is that almost every product out there is in the 99% efficacy, 100% efficacy. Right. We all know that the reality looks pretty different. Yeah. We talked about artificial intelligence. It's something that we certainly have spoken about for years, but people are getting serious about it in terms of cybersecurity. Where do you see the role of AI in cybersecurity? Yeah, it's, it's a very, very important role. Um, obviously, as we deal with a larger volume of threat and a more advanced type of threat, um, we really need to double down on a more scalable way to deal with these attacks. If attacks are not being completely auto-generated by machines, I don't think it makes sense that us as humans, you know, will try to actually filter through each one of these attacks. So AI's purpose and machine learning's purpose is really to try and deal with attacks at scale, to really try and not deal with every attack on a singular basis. You want to try and have, you know, either a, an artificial brain or a machine learning algorithm really sift through the things that are happening on a given endpoint or network or, or whatever, but really try and have that machine take the decisions, try to discern what's bad and what's good, rather than, again, offloading to either, you know, signature-based controls or just humans who are, you know, in need to monitor. And we all know that's a very, you know, that, that's a complete scarcity we have right now in the market for cybersecurity talent. You talked about advanced threats, and, and we're well past the point now where you can reliably count on systems that detect signature-based yeah. malware. Is it time to sort of put the nail in the coffin on signature-based antivirus detection? I think it's pretty safe to assume. I think it's, you know, we've seen the attackers already leapfrog, you know, signature-based controls. We've seen that on average a malware, you know, a piece of malware or a file or a malicious file lives for 10 seconds and then a new one is being generated. So mm -hmm. coupled that with the fact that attacks are becoming more targeted, which means that someone is architecturing an attack that is tailored only to you. No one had seen that before. You're not going to have a signature for that. So, mm -hmm. so obviously those approaches make the defense approach of using signatures really obsolete. Um, with that, IOCs as well, indicators of compromise, are really static by nature and again imply to something that you already know. So if we're trying to defend from the unknown by leveraging past reputation, that's obviously not going to work. So you really have to move towards more predictive models to try and discern what is it that you're dealing with right now. Tom, so many organizations have put countless resources into legacy security controls like signature-based detection. Yeah. And yet they're no more secure now than they ever were. Does this give the cybersecurity industry a credibility crisis to deal with? I think it is, and I think it also really much, you know, the marketing buzz around it. I mean, if you try and kind of look back in the past five years and look at some of these promises that these, you know, vendors have been putting out there, um, some outlandish claims around efficacy numbers, I think they're doing a disservice for the industry because if a customer doesn't know what he's installing, he or she are installing in their environment, um, 
how, how do they know what are they protected from? So, so obviously being a little bit more transparent about what we can deliver. I mean, mm -hmm. don't, don't sell 100% protection. There's nothing as 100% protection. Mm -hmm. No solution is bulletproof. And, and you really need to be a little bit more forefront, of, forefront about it mm -hmm. as a security vendor, I think. That would benefit all of us. Well, another issue you hear from critics sometimes is that the industry is built upon the premise of almost being secure. Because if you're <laughs> completely secure, there's nothing more to buy. Yeah. We want you to continue to renew. Is that an issue as well? Um, I think the attackers are, do are doing a good job of keeping us in business, yes. um, unfortunately, <laughs> I have to say. Um, but all in all, I mean, it's, it's kind of a true assertion. But trust me that, you know, if we could have blocked any attack on the planet, we would have done that. And I think that it's true for the big vendors, too. I think just attackers are evolving in a, in a you know, faster pace than what the traditional security solution can actually adapt towards. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is, that is really the key. I mean, no one expects anyone to build a bulletproof solution right now, yeah. but I think we do expect, and it's not such a high bar, to demand our solutions to be able to adapt at the speed of the attacker. So mm -hmm. don't, you know, don't put a patch out there three months after the attack has been in the wild. Why don't you do it a day after, an hour after? So make your technology that adaptable, and that, that's kind of the approach that we've been taking. So in this huge marketplace with big and legacy players and new players as well, where is Sentinel One going to distinguish itself? I think a lot of what we do today is really about our approach to deal with every vector of attack. I mean, we're trying to be really conscious about what we do, um, what we can protect from, what we can't protect from, what's our field of expertise, and we're trying to give the most comprehensive approach to people out there. Um, no signatures are included in our product. I mean, we, we work with a complete behavioral model coupled with pre-execution scanning uh, that's machine learning based. Um, it's, it's a more robust approach to kind of diffuse different types of attacks at machine speed in real time and not offload the problem back to the human uh, or the SOC team in that, in that uh, instance. Very good. Tom, I appreciate your time and your insight today. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Tom. Been talking about cybersecurity with Tomer Weingarten. He's the CEO of Sentinel One. For Information Security Media Group, I'm Tom Field. Thank you very much.